The third one, which we talk a bit about is authority. And it's, it's everywhere. I mean, it's with my kids, it's with my spouse, it's with my friends. You know, one, some friend can say, you look like hell today, right? And I'll just laugh. Someone else might say that, and I might give their voice more authority. You go, oh, maybe I, maybe I need to lose weight or something, you know? <laughs> you know? So we're always unconsciously ascribing authority to voices. It doesn't matter whether in business, in you know, social setting, at home. It's just embedded in our conversations. So how we're a father has a lot to do with the kind of authority we want to have. Do we want to be authoritative? Do we want to be a teacher? Do we want to be, you know, uh, a friend? And in business, it just gets exasperated through like the Riata story. It gets exasperated by 10 because there are these layers and the layers inherently say, yeah, this guy has more stripes. He gets to make the call. It's a lot clearer in the hierarchy around work. But as you said, there are often times where an opinion from a friend you might hold completely dear, like, oh my God, that guy is a style expert and I look like crap today. I got to change my wardrobe. Or someone else could just be joking around with you and teasing you and you would not ascribe that level of authority to their opinion in that manner. Being aware of it, uh, of the authority thing, means I can choose to say, you know what, Jim? go away. I don't, you're, you're so full of crap, you know, <laughs> or say to another person, you know, thanks, help me out. Help me out here. How can I do it better? Right. We can make that call if we're aware of the, the issue. And this fourth one is related to authority. Yeah. You know, the fourth one is when we have authority and we make decisions and we make calls on what voices we give power to, we're doing that based on standards that we hold and my, I claim that 90% of the standards we have, we didn't even choose. We grow up and we adopt our families or we choose not to adopt our families because someone else influenced us, right? But we, we adopt these standards, good, bad, beautiful, ugly, good father, bad father, rich, poor, whatever. I mean, take any of those extremes and we have a standard that then is underneath every opinion and judgment we make. So when we say that was a really stupid decision, what we can do is, I mean, that's a pretty negative, hard hitting thing. But if we take the time to go, wait a minute, what's the standard underneath that I'm basing that judgment on? A lot of times, I mean, I in work and not in, in relationships, um, that doesn't get discussed. So couples will argue about, argue and argue and argue, but they don't realize that they're actually operating on different standards. Sometimes I worked with some women groups and I would ask them, how many of you, when you left this morning, when you leave in the morning, would feel bad if the beds aren't made? 80% of the hands in the room go up. And I'd say, so tell me about that. And like, where did, where did that come from? And sure enough, my mother taught me. That's how my grandmother did it. My father gave my mother a hard time if the beds weren't made. There's some story there about where that standard came from. The funny thing about standards that I've realized, and, and Johnny and I fall into the same trap around the standard, is just because it's a standard and it's been passed to you doesn't make it right. And sometimes we hold these a, a little truer than the others. So, you know, Johnny and I both fall into this trap of of being hardworking because our our families coming from blue collar background, we're always just like outwork everyone. You have to show that you're the hardest worker. And we'll often fall into this trap. And now we actually hire consultants and coaches to help us out. And they'll often point out like much easier paths that don't involve nearly the level of work. And we're sitting here bashing our head at this problem over and over again, because we think we're just going to outwork it. And if we just work harder, it's going to go away. And there's a, a path B, a lot less work, a lot less blood, sweat, and tears that gets you there quicker that we've avoided. Because our standard is, well, we have to be working harder. We have to be putting in the hours. We have to be sweating here or it's not proving ourselves. So I find that the trap around standards oftentimes will lead you blindly to a place where, again, maybe you're not making the bed correctly. Maybe in my wife's opinion, I'm not cleaning the kitchen to a high enough standard. And we don't often verbalize these standards. And it wasn't until I started getting coaching and outside perspectives around these standards that I realized like, oh, okay. I'm judging myself harshly, and this standard is also impeding me from building other quality relationships around me, and I don't even realize that it's invisible to me. 